Welcome to the MechSoft User Spotlight Series, where you can find real customers achieving their success with MechSoft products. Today we'll be spotlighting McCafferty dulcimers and their use of RhinoCam CNC software. McCafferty Dulcimers, located in Brookshire, Texas, has been crafting fine Appalachian dulcimers since 1993. Owner and operator Terry McCafferty grew up around woodworking with a carpenter father and worked as a cabinet maker in his early years. Terry was later educated as an engineer and spent four decades involved in product design and development. Terry holds several patents related to large machinery that he has developed. We recently sat down with Terry in his studio to discuss the Appalachian Dulcimer craft and his use of RhinoCam from Mexop Corporation. Terry's building methods are from two worlds. The traditional craft allows for personal touches, adapting to the material at hand and evolving the art of dulcimer design. The modern world of CNC machines accommodates precisions where needed and repeatable processes for predictable results. Many machining fixtures and detailed processes go into the making of each McCafferty dulcimer. Is there a better way? Is always running through Terry's mind as he crafts each instrument. Terry's studio is well appointed to accommodate the most effective approach for each task at hand. Here is more of what Terry McCafferty had to say about RhinoCam. If I have a problem and I call Maxoff for customer support, I get it and they fix it, okay? And there are just so many companies out there today that you can't get to a person. Right. Okay. You can send them a message and maybe they'll respond, but, but Maxsoft's tech support to me is second to none with anything I deal with. I, I think it's a pretty full-featured product. The software to me is at least as important as the machine itself. Thanks, Terry. Mother of Pearl inlays, two and one half axis machining. The fretboard of a McCafferty Appalachian dulcimer can include from up to 25 different standard patterns and growing, and also have the option for custom patterns as requested. In this video, we discuss how Terry approaches the machining of the Mother of Pearl inlays, as well as the inlay pocketing and more. Two of Terry's beautiful inlay examples are shown here. The inlays start with planar 2D curves drawn in Rhino to represent the 0.043 inch thick mother of pearl stock. The image on the left shows the outline curves nested into the mother of pearl stock sheet. Terry uses one 2 and 1 half axis profiling operation. The RhinoCam machining job tree is shown here on the right. Here on the left, we see the 2 and 1 half axis profiling toolpath using a 0.03125 inch diameter flat end mill at a general tolerance of 0.0001. The cut feed is set to 9 inches per minute. The total cut depth is set to 0.064 inches, which will cut past the depth of the stock and adhesive and into the MDF base. Each cut level is set to 0.01 inches, or 10 thousandths, for a total of six cut levels per profile, with cut levels ordering set to depth first. Each cut level entry is a 10 degree ramp motion at a height of 0.012 inches. Arc fitting is enabled with a fitting tolerance T of 0.0002 and a minimum distance sort enabled. On the right, we see the in-process stock cut material simulation of the 2 and 1 half axis profiling operation on the Mother of Pearl. The Mother of Pearl stock material is 1 inch wide by 2 inches long and 0.046 inches thick. It is mounted on an MDF base using soluble adhesive shown here on the left. Once machining is complete, the adhesive is dissolved and the inlays are ready to mount. Cutting the inlay pockets. 
Here on the left, we see the planar 2D curves representing the inlay pockets on the fretboard. On the right, we see the machining job with pocketing, remachining, and profiling finishing toolpaths. The planar 2D curves and the initial 2 and 1 half axis pocketing toolpath with the inlay pockets on the fretboard using a 0.0625 flat end mill are shown here on the left. The tolerance is set to 0.0001, stock is 0, a climb cut direction, and a step over 40% of the tool diameter. On the right, we see the 2 and 1 half axis remachining operation using a 0.024 inch diameter end mill. The remachining toolpath is calculated to remove only the in process stock left over from the larger tool of the previous operation. Strum hollow and tail, 3 axis machining. The strum hollow and tail portions of the fretboard require three axis machining operations. They take advantage of the roughing capability incorporated into Rhino Camp's three axis parallel finishing toolpath strategy. They also illustrate some best practices for three axis machining, such as using masking surfaces to guide the toolpaths over and around critical areas, and the use of overlapping closed 2D planar containment regions. On the left, we see the completed fretboard shown on the CNC machine table. The final assembled dulcimer is shown on the right, with the fretboard strum hollow and tail clearly shown. The machining job tree includes the toolpath operations for the fretboard tail. Two three-axis parallel finishing operations are used for roughing, and two are used for finishing. The strum hollow uses separate but identical operations, all dimensions mentioned here are in inches. The part and stock models. Here on the left, we see the 3D surface model of the fretboard in Rhino. On the right, we see the stock model, 30 inches by 1.75 inches by 0.8 inches, shown translucent over the part model. The surfaces shown in red serve the purpose of protectively masking critical edges that Terry wants to keep the tool away from. In 3-axis machining, RhinoCam incorporates automatic gouge-free machining of all visible surface geometry. You can also see 2D closed planar curves shown in blue that serve to contain the toolpaths in the X and Y. The underlying surfaces will automatically contain the toolpaths in the Z direction. 3-axis rough parallel finishing. To rough out the fretboard stock, Terry uses four 3-axis parallel finishing operations, two for the strum hollow right and left, and two for the tail right and left. The stock allowance parameter and the step down Z cuts option on the Z containment tab of the parallel finishing operation are used for roughing. For this job, Terry is using two cut levels. On the left, we see a close-up of the fretboard tail, as well as the planar 2D curves used for containment regions. The regions overlap 0.1 or 10 thousandths along the center line and are used to contain each 3-axis toolpath. We also see a close-up of the masking surfaces, shown in red. The surface that extends past the end of the tail will keep the tool from rolling over the edge, producing a nice even edge cut. The other masking surfaces perform a similar function. Also shown as reference is the nut and bridge model. On the right, we see both rough parallel finishing operations, right and left, using a 1 half inch diameter ball mill at a step over of 25% in a mixed cut direction. When both operations are selected from the machining job tree, both are displayed together on the part, as shown here. The three-axis parallel finishing operation supports multiple Z step-down levels, making the operation ideal for roughing tasks. In this image on the left, we see the Z-level display dialog, along with the first of two cut levels selected. The remaining stock allowance is set to 0 0.1. On the right, we see the second rough cut level of the three axis parallel finishing operations. Notice how the masking surface, shown in red, forces the cutting tool past the edge of the fretboard tail. Three axis parallel finishing.
To finish the fretboard stock, Terry again uses four overlapping 3-axis parallel finishing operations, two for the strum hollow right and left and two for the tail right and left. These operations differ from the previous roughing operations. The stock allowance is set to zero and step down Z cuts is disabled from the Z containment tab. On the left, we see the cut material simulation for the previous three axis rough parallel finishing operations with the remaining stock allowance set to 0.1. It shows the right side operation at cut level one and the left side operation at cut level two. The two right and left cuts overlap by 0.1 along the center line. On the right, we see the final cut material simulation for the three axis parallel finishing operation with the remaining stock allowance set to zero, but with the step down Z cuts disabled. The step over is set to 5% or 0.025 inches. Now sit back and enjoy the cut material simulation of these three axis parallel roughing and finishing tool paths in RhinoCam. More studio pics. Here are some additional images from Terry McCafferty's studio. For more studio pics from Terry McCafferty, we invite you to visit him online at McCafferdyDulcimers.com slash shop. Enjoy the craftsmanship. For more information about Terry McCafferty and the quality Appalachian dulcimer instruments that he crafts, we invite you to visit him online at McCafferdyDulcimers.com and on Facebook at facebook.com slash McCafferty Dulcimers. We want to thank Terry McCafferty for allowing us to showcase his work with RhinoCam. RhinoCam Mill is available in five configurations, Express, Standard, Expert, Professional, and Premium. The parts shown here were programmed using the Professional configuration. Here are some additional details about each of the available configurations. For the complete features list, we invite you to visit the RhinoCam product page. This video was brought to you by Mexoft Corporation, your CAM partner.